hello and what is up everybody welcome back to another video and for you guys i got a little bit of something new something experimental here we got a new video concept i'm calling it right now player reviews it's kind of inspired by the worst players you can get in matchmaking and a dota thread if you guys know about that one um anyway there's a whole host of interesting personalities in na dota and i think think it would be a pretty interesting idea to go over uh, each player what they do in pubs what their go-to picks are what they do I, I mean the only reason I'm actually doing this is because this dude here um, let's just click on his profile real quick this is the game I'm going to be doing the review of but talk me and it's negative 25 um, aka disruptive pilot aka Kenneth he is a 7k dota player on US East you see here he is a spirit breaker spammer it looks like he does play a whole host of other heroes here um, but with pretty low win rate and um, he hasn't played PL since 2014 all right so mostly playing spirit breaker it seems he does go to coddle for supporting I guess and Lifestealer seems to be his go-to carry. Uh, maybe he did get some pointers from Zingle313, the Lifestealer NA God. Um, and so he does maintain a almost 50% win rate, or close to 50% win rate with Lifestealer. It is above 50. So uh, let's look at uh, his second pick, or second most played hero here, and it will be Ogre Magi. Looks like he hasn't played it in a while. Looks like he's sticking to his Spirit Breaker because let's just do a bit of a meta analysis real quick here, guys. We go to meta, we go to 5k plus bracket, and it seems like Spirit Breaker, he is pretty high pick rate hero and as well as the highest win rate hero with 55% win rate. So big surprise there. Uh, 7k only Spirit Breaker player or pretty much only Spirit Breaker player getting 7k playing Spirit Breaker on a patch where Spirit Breaker is one of the highest win rates, the highest win rate in 5k plus uh, pubs. So let's go back to the profile real quick here and uh, check out some of these games in his history and we'll see exactly what he tends to like to play. Looks like he's opting to play Crystal Maiden now as a support when he doesn't get his offlane role because he does play offlane Spirit Breaker and we'll point out more of what, what he does, what he likes to do and this is going to be educational guys, it's not to flame anybody. Um, all remarks are considered... Uh, community building let's say that uh no salt at all anybody uh just gave me a good idea he did call me out on my youtube channel because i uh played desolator anti-mage in his game yesterday but you know idc mmr sometimes you random and you pick uh and you get am Dude, shit happens but uh a desolator am does work in case you guys are wondering it does uh stack with his matter burn now in the new change i believe does it does it does it it does so let's just look at the game history real quick here uh it looks like it's mostly spirit breaker a um, couple of other skillless heroes uh razor and uh abaddon there um and around high skill heroes I mean anyway it looks like he is also a Nyx player occasionally uh, it fits the same thing with the spirit breaker right you kind of just go in a uh, gang people it looks like he does build the same things every game as well so let's check real quick this is the uh, my spirit breaker build as well um, looks like he might be supporting these games who knows but as you see here it's mostly spirit breaker uh, every single game and uh, all right, let's get right into the replay analysis. There's not much more to say about the game history here. As if we look through it, it's pretty much Spirit Breaker um, more than every other game. Uh, in most games, it's probably banned or it's just not a good pick. He doesn't get his role or something. So he goes Crystal Maiden and other things. But uh, let's open up Dota real quick here and get right into the replay analysis. Stop beating around the bush here real quick and let's get into it i already have it downloaded and let's get right into it is this one all right so i like to go over the game real quick here this is gonna be probably a high average game it seems um what is this player 
Yeah, we got King RD from SG Esports playing his Batrider. Um, on the Dire, we got it looks like Sunbee, uh, Buddy Tensai there. On the Nyx Assassin, I don't know who this guy is. Uh, Ryu, maybe? I think. Yeah, Ryu. And I don't know who 23 is. So he has 7k. So it looks like it's probably high 6k, 7k average game, just judging from the players. And let's do the replay analysis right now, guys. And uh, I believe we can learn a lot from this one because from a mindless underlord spammer in the offlane to get 6k, then spamming Spirit Breaker to get 7k in a patch. I think this is a winning strategy, guys. With this, you guys might be able to increase your MMR by 1,000, guys. And if you actually increase your MMR by 1,000 by watching this video, make sure you leave a like and maybe subscribe. So I'm gonna title this video, how to raise your MMR by 1,000 points by playing Spirit Breaker because I believe that's exactly what this dude did. And let's see, we'll watch it from his player perspective, of course. And let's check it out, everyone. So looking at the starting item build here, nothing really out of the ordinary. Um, I believe he is playing support this game because of course King RD is the offlane master so he will be playing support but notice I don't think he bought any support items he might have bought the courier how do you do math Here, hold on. let's go back and check all right this is super fucking bug whoops all right check it this out all right he did buy a ward i think courier was purchased by tusk as you see tusk has a little bit less region than him doesn't have a cell and tusk also bought the other ward here and also we'll just uh speed it up here real quick so he will be playing a roaming spirit breaker leaving his am undefended in the safe lane and this is what happens when you only play spirit breaker in the offlane position and then your role gets stolen well i don't think he only plays it in the offlane position but he mostly plays it in that role um if he can um, but in this game it looks like his lane will be taken from the or by the bat rider and so the other support also picked a roamer so they're in a pretty weird position now where anti-mage has no support gg is gg and now go down mid but uh, we'll see how he adapts the situation here on how he makes the most of the hero so let's check this out Let's just speed through it. Nothing's happening right now. People are disconnecting left and right. Uh, right. So it looks like Tusk will try to steal the enemy rune there. Not much success in that one. While Disruptive Pilot gonna start near the mid lane. It's gonna scout out Tensai here and give him a click to the face. And he has yet to skill yet. Uh, either his bash or the charge. Uh, it is sometimes good to skill bash at level 1. Uh, with the over venom you can chase someone down you get a lucky bash and it can set up a kill but for the most part i believe you do want to level up charge of darkness but we'll see what he decides to do here now he's trying to wrap around the mid lane here uh, very sneaky onto this ember spirit but i believe he has been spotted uh, there's also an enemy ward there and he's still yet to skill anything but in the bottom lane the tusk actually allowing the anti mage to get first blood there onto the uh, earthshaker so impressive play from the tusk five position tusk who says it can't work something that team liquid does right karoki tusk god but this uh, analysis is not about a tusk it's about the spirit breaker so it looks like he will be dual laning mid now with his lena um, not so sure she really needs this help against ember spirit but you know uh, where else can he go? He can actually be in the safe lane pulling potentially, but uh, putting the pressure on mid is not bad, guys. And it's, it's coming at a little bit of a cost as he's sapping a little bit of Venus levels, but I mean, I'm sure she's appreciating the extra help uh, pressuring this Ember Spear. But now we're going to see a charge into the top lane. The Ogre does have four Napalm stacks on him, now five. This might potentially be a kill, but the Firefly is ending soon. Nice stun there from Tensai and ogre gonna go down sick play if he was in the safe lane he wouldn't have been close enough to go for that charge so he's gonna be able to set up another kill for his team here and now radiant pretty far ahead with a bit of an unconventional draft no real lane support for the anti-mage but they're making it work so far 
I see Disruptive Pilot gonna contest the Nyx for the rune, will not be successful in doing so, and it looks like the Lina will go down mid solo to the Ember Spirit. Wah, 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 wah. Now he's gonna come in from behind, potentially trying to go in for a wraparound on Ember. Once Lina respawns, he sees that Ember is pretty low, and we'll see a charge right now. He's gonna get hit by the Dragon Slave. Will the stun connect from the Lina? Does she even have stun? She does not. She went for the 201. Well, they're just not too uncommon. So Ember is gonna be able to get away. Now he's gonna pop the Clary to get his mana right back up there. Pretty good so far hasn't used a lot of regen and um i mean this is pretty standard spirit breaker play and the hero doesn't really require that much thinking guys uh, the biggest thing about the hero is later in the game you have to make sure you get good charges off most the probably the most important thing about the hero is make sure you just don't charge randomly and bait your teammates into death i think that's if you're not doing that, you're probably being useful on the hero. Uh, let's all be honest here. But he's gonna go for a charge onto the Nyx, and no follow up from the Lina. So just a bit of harass. He still has plenty of mana. So he did pop that clarity, and he could be charging this Earthshaker. But Earthshaker does have a lot of ways to cancel his charge. But now the charge is gonna come in. Will it be too late though? It will be, as the Tusk is gonna go down, and I believe the Earthshaker is gonna yeah, he's gonna pop this south. He can also. Oh, he didn't time it correctly, so he's gonna connect with the charge. Now he's gonna get the stun off with his totem, and he's gonna force to walk back here. Now he has one more charge left. Uh, early in the game, your charge mana is pretty important. You want to really to try to conserve your mana to the best of your ability, especially once you don't have a clarity anymore, because that could mean the difference between being able to show up at a gank uh, to secure a kill, or you're just sitting there being useless on the spirit breakers. You will TP back to base to make sure he has full mana, but this is gonna hurt him in the sense that he won't have boots, and notice he went for another clarity, just to make sure he always has mana. It's really important, guys, that you have mana on spirit breaker, because otherwise he is not doing anything. Uh, without his charge in the early game and we're going to see here king rd is going to set up a stun onto the ogre the charge will redirect onto sunby here and i don't think they're able to kill him terribly very tanky at this point sitting on 12 armor and has 10 stick charges as well they're going to try though and snowball going to come in they're going to get the slow from the over venom sunby actually just going to pop his meta and turn around should get this kill onto King RD, but with a 17%, they're gonna be able to finish him off. Impressive play there by Disruptive Pilot, all skill there. And now he's gonna try to get himself back. He realized that Ember has TP'd in. Notice that he immediately backed away. He doesn't have a TP to get away though. So he's gonna have to sneak around the trees and he will get out. So no problem with that. Leave your teammates to die when they're gonna die. Now he's going to try to charge back in and secure the kill onto the Ember. He will be able to drop a Remnant and he's going to go to it. Uh, fortunately, no Lucky Bash this time and Disruptive Pilot doesn't have boots. So he's not going to be able to catch up. He needs to wait four more seconds for another charge. But no, King RD Batrider will be able to finish off the Ember with his Firefly. Now he's going to even get a last hit onto the creep here. He's so going to go charge back in onto Sunby. Sunby did just TP in, so if he dies here, it's pretty bad for him as he'll have to all, walk all the way back to lane. Uh, he will not go down though, so he's very tanky. Uh, definitely another hero is needed for the kill. Boots will be purchased now, so um, just the standard starting items for any roamer or support in general, just boots and stick. Not going for anything uh, out of the ordinary quite yet. He will be going for treads, it looks like, instead of uh, tranquils or any other type of boot. And right here we see some Russian spamming from the anti-mage. Looks like anti-mage is doing okay in the bottom lane. Just open up the last hits real quick to check. Of course, it won't really matter for our Spirit Breaker players. He only has one, that one troll that he managed to get, but you're not last hitting when you're a Spirit Breaker for the most part, unless you are off lane. And once again, it looks like anti-mage will get a kill onto the Earthshaker. So right now, Ryu doing pretty poorly in his offlane right now. I think he has a lot of levels. Right, his level's not even looking that good either. Anti-mage is already level six. He's only level four. Um, he's the same level as Disruptive Pilot, actually, so... I see another charge here onto Sunbeat. He's gonna pop his uh, Reflection, 
and it's going to slow down both the bat as well as disruptive pilot they're not going to be able to chase any further but now he does have charge again in one second they're going to go into this ogre and the thing about this combo is uh bat rider plus any support that can just go in and provide a stun or a slow like over venom supports is really strong like bat rider ogre bat rider tree can really put a lot of pressure on the safe lane and we see that now disruptive pilot going to tv back to base as he was running pretty low in hp as well as mana but Ember going to take down the mid tower here and this is just something that you can do now with the new change to the catapult. Once the 5 minute catapult comes in and you're a hero that can clear waves real quick, you can really just take down the tower real quick. Um, even if you're not traditionally a hero that will do tower damage like an Ember Spirit. And so good play there from the Ember Spirit. Charge does come in to try to stop him from killing the Lina but it will not be successful as Lina is still going to go down while Tensai rotates in for that kill. So if we look right now, Radiant is still pretty far ahead in terms of net worth. And once again, King RD getting get another kill onto Sunbi. He should be tilted right now, guys. And now Disruptive Pilot looks like he's one of sits mid, gets some experience. He wants to get up to his level 6. That's gonna allow him to catch out to heroes and provide an extra stun as well as damage. And he's not gonna actually take the last hits right now, he's just sitting, getting the experience, giving the last hits to his tusk. And now he's gonna walk to the rune. Bit of a fight over the mid lane here. It looks like Tusk will take the farm at this point. As when you're a spirit breaker, ideally you want to stay off the map. And the one thing about the Nexus game is it's pretty good against all of the Radiant heroes, honestly. Especially the Lina and the Bat Rider. Uh, decent against AM as well, because once AM's mana is burned, of course he can't blink, he can't do anything, uh, except for just trying to mana up and fight. Um, which in most scenarios, he'll end up losing. So we see a uh, different pilot will take over the mid lane right now as the Tusk has left to the bottom lane. He's going to get his level 6 here, going to get up some farm as well, should finish up his treads. And this is something I had to do sometimes as a roamer is uh, when there's not much happening on the map, you got to make sure to take the farm that's available to you so you get your levels up. You, do, you don't want to stay under level for too long. Um, uh, which happens a lot of times when people play heroes like Treant, um, Ogre, or Slaughter, and they end up just trying to look for ganks all the time. Um, the time for ganking is kind of over, laning stage has sizzled, and uh, at this point he really wants to be able to just get some levels up so then he can assist his team in team fights later, because at this point um, there's not really going to be any ganks happening anymore, uh, other than like smoke ganks or anything like that. Keep in mind this is a high MMR game, so it's pretty unlikely that uh, someone here like a Terror Blade will just get caught out randomly and uh, die at this point in the game. So I do like how he is going to the mid lane, getting some farm and experience there. And now he did get his level 6, also has his treads when he wants to buy it. But he does see that the bottom lane is being pressured by the Ember Spear. I feel like this Ember has done a really good job of pressuring the lane so far. He's already taken down the mid tower now. He's going to go bottom. And the thing is, he's kind of untouchable right now. Lina can't really kill him and she's pretty under leveled. Um, I mean, not under leveled, but she is not at a point where she can take out Ember. He does have boots of travel, so um, he's on low HP as well. So I feel like he can go down, but with the support from his team there, they're just not feeling in a position to contest him. So instead, Lina is just going to AFK farm her Bloodstone. Uh, I'm not so sure how well it's going to work out, but let's see. So. Right now, as a roamer, you pretty much have nothing to do, so if you look at uh, Disruptive Pilot's gameplay for like the past 3 minutes or so, he's just been sitting around getting some farm, and I mean, it's pretty good as he is hit level 7 now, and has his 4 points in Greater Bash. Note that he did go for Greater Bash build, and that's probably why he did go Treads, as with this build, your charge speed is a lot slower, um, the stun duration from the charge itself isn't that long, but when you charge through, it's going to do uh, more damage and more stun. So, it's one of the builds for the hero. Uh, the other build, of course, is maxing Charge of Darkness, but it looks like the bottom tower will be taken out, but in the meantime, they do go for a little bit of trade as mid tower goes down to the Lina pushing in and now they're sending up to defend King RD in this top lane but Nyx Assassin's already ahead of them as he's scouting out right now in Vendetta 
and he will try to jump someone right now as they're backing away and Earthshaker's coming in as well and here comes the Vendetta onto King RD but now the Fisher coming out from the Earthshaker this probably pilot eating a lot of stuns but didn't take much damage at all he's pretty tanky now with the treads and they will take that off and they will rotate the lean in and get the counter kill onto Tensai now Lasso gonna come onto the Ogre Snowball as well this is looking to be a pretty good fight right now for the Radiant but now the Echo Slam coming in he tries to charge away that's why you saw his camera move like that but did not really come in time he was pretty much dead there they did kill the Earthshaker to uh, the flyer fly so it was a three for two trade but they lose the lena anti-mage has been farming this whole time so uh, not a bad trade in general it was even if anything uh, it was a good setup there from him to be in that position and now they're gonna try to charge in for the terror blade but i don't think they're gonna commit to this one Maybe they already have the tusk in place, and I, I don't know about this one. Yeah, he does cancel the charge there as Terror Blade was right on top of his shrine, but Metamorph is still act, uh, active as well. Now, Ember, he did go for the split pushing build, not going for a veil or anything like that. He has boots of travel, and let's see what he will be going into. So he's gonna go for Battle Fury, so he's going for the classic Ember build. Um, not so sure how good that is against AM, but we'll see. watching AM right now. AM does have his Battle Fury. Very fast Battle Fury timing. Uh, it looks like uh, the Tusk got caught out trying to ward here. That's unfortunate. Uh, let's see what Disruptive Pilot is doing. He finds the Emperor in the mid lane, but this is an Emperor with an Arcane Rune. But they will bash him down, uses the ultimate, and he secures the kill there with the Lina. That was a big play there, taking the Ember out like that, and that will give them a lot of gold as well. Uh, it'll give him a lot of gold specifically as he did get the kill there and notice how he's still holding on to clarities um, it's very important that the spirit breaker um what i call him the spirit spirit breaker has mana always keep that in mind and sometimes you want to tread swap but the, no, the one thing to note is when you tread swap to int um you're not going to have strength as you charge in so you're going to end up doing a little bit of less damage in general because when you come in immediately your uh, bash your attack whatever is going to do less damage as you swap immediately we'll see actually if he is tread swapping i don't think he is and he's going to charge into the ember and he's going to be in the rush but now the last are going to come out and he's going to try to bash the ember down but nyx assassin with a big three-man stun into the carapace as well ember going to turn that around and and this is one of those scenarios where you kind of bake your team into a awful fight. You charge in, fight looks good in the beginning, and oh, AM is going to make it look even though as he comes in with the mana void, getting two kills. Or one kill. Where did the Earthshaker die? Shigger died over here, right? Lena got that kill, so never mind. He got that one kill for himself. And let's go back to the Spirit Breaker here. Looks like he will be building into Midas, so he's taking the four position, forcing his Tusk to be a five, which um, is not bad. I feel like Tusk can't fit in the five position. He's doing a little bit of dewarding now. Gonna use his Tusk to provide his uh, uh, Tusk shards to provide vision. But it's not going to provide vision long enough. They also don't have the range to kill the ward. So they're going to instead use the courier. And Lena going to take care of that one. So let's see. Uh, it's a level Spirit Breaker gameplay right now. And what the next move is. I mean at this point. Uh, he has several options right. Uh, he wants to just stick around the Tusk. And the Lena. Those um, are the heroes that he will be able to do the most with. And of course Batrider as well. And... Because right now, Anti-Mage doesn't really want to fight. He is not that capable of fighting as well. I mean, he can provide a lot of damage as he's pretty high level. And his farm is really good. But uh, there's not a chance that he will be in a scenario where he's going to fight. But now, you see the charge come in. And he's going to get spotted out. He's going to go down. They charge in. And this is what happens when you're playing a roaming hero. And you have a team that just wants the AFK farm. You charge in. You end up dying 
Um, so that was actually not good at all. Did the enemy have wards or something? Let's check out. Yeah, they did have a ward here, so they saw him coming. Uh, he wanted that kill, cancelled his charge, but still got caught out there by the enemy team. That's unfortunate, but now he'll just be waiting in the respawn. So let's check it out right now. He will respawn and immediately probably TP to this bottom lane, it looks like. Uh, they're not so sure yet where the enemy went, and yeah, he will do just that. He might end up dying here again if he's not careful. Um, and you see he is suspecting some funny business down here as so he's not going to the creep wave to farm it he's just TPing out gonna hide into trees but now Ember Spirit will catch him out if he gets spotted somehow so Ember we're gonna push all the way into the tower if they check in these trees he's in a lot of trouble or we're gonna be here as well and he's just gonna sit here get the experience from the creep wave pushing and he can't afford to show himself AM in the meantime is off split pushing in the enemy jungle and this is some uh High level game player right now, 7k spirit breaker sitting in the trees. And I mean, this is how it is, right? When you're playing a hero like this, just how you're gonna spend most of your game until a fight starts, especially in a game like this one. Uh, resident sleeper, but it looks like I am gonna go down the top lane and he's gonna use the opportunity to immediately charge onto the ogre after the ember has left the building. He's gonna just farm the creep wave up right now. But in the top lane, looks like the tusk gonna go down as well to the ember spirit. So he's down here. He might have been able to go top and help out the AM. He will get the D ward, uh, the ward that killed him previously. And now they're gonna just farm up this bottom lane together. He's still very long away from it, long way away from his Midas here. And I definitely think there's a big lack of taunting from the spirit breaker i like to see more taunting coming out from him but now we're going to see him charge all the way up in the top lane onto this earth shaker a play like this got him killed last time let's see what happens now as he will commit to this charge he's gonna hit the nope gonna get hit by a fissure blocked off and now they're just gonna farm the creeps so in the past eight minutes or so he really hasn't done much at all as am still wants to farm up but that was a pretty big death on am there if you look at the radiant they're still keeping up in terms of net worth but am doesn't match up against terrorblade that well and at this point i feel like they do need to set up a smoke and they're going to do just that as they smoke up with four am still going to do his own thing and uh, split push get his farm up that rider does have blink for initiation he is going straight into a BKB to make sure that he doesn't get stunned up by the Nyx. But where, oh where are the enemy heroes now guys? They're not going to run into anyone at this point and I think anyone that they run into at this point will be a bad kill but maybe not as they get a lasso onto the terror but can they burst him down before he gets to Sunder? They will as the uh, Spirit Breaker ultimate comes out as well as the Laguna Blade but now they're in a bit of precarious position next to the enemy shrine. Um, it doesn't look like the Dire team wants to respawn at all. They did try to TP someone in but they were not in time to save the terror Blade. So that was a pretty big kill. It should allow them to do some damage to his bottom tower potentially. Now nah, AM's not interested. He's blinking away from the tower but the rest of the team looks like they do want to try to take the tower down it's still pretty healthy but let's see what happens here terrorblade is spawning in 20 seconds so they might have to watch themselves he's keeping tabs on the ember spirit there maybe potentially charging him to keep vision on him but now in the mid lane it looks like the tusk will get caught out by the earth shaker He'll try to save himself, but instead they're just going to take this space and push in and try to take this tier 2. Tier 2 will take a ton of damage here and it might just fall, but at this point they're in a very precarious position uh, with the Terror Blade spawning. And here we see the TPs coming in from the Nick Assassin as well as the Terror Blade ready to cut them off. Let's see Disruptive Pilot's movement here. He's going to try to charge away, but he will get hit by a Fisher. He's dead to rights. They're going to blink in with the Totem Stomp. Ember comes in as well. That's a mega kill streak for the Ember Spirit. I think the play there was probably to hide in the trees on the right side then wait for the charge but he didn't have a TP. The uh, play was probably to have a TP but he just didn't have the slot for it. He didn't buy one because he does want to get his Midas. That's what happens when you want to play greedy for a Midas. You forget to buy things such as TP but he does have dust though for the Nyx so. And once again we're watching a Spirit Breaker death screen. 
And AM's farm is looking pretty good though. He has Battle Fury almost into his Manta style. Keep in mind the Ember did go for Battle Fury as well. We're gonna charge onto the Ember Spirit here just to provide vision. And this is something you can do when you're not really ready to commit onto a kill or anything, but you can charge onto kind of elusive heroes to keep vision and make sure that you have a clear idea where they are on the map. And he'll immediately cancel the charge, of course, as soon as he gets anywhere near. And he's actually going to back himself away. The tower bottom looks like it will be given away to the Dire. No one's going to come back and defend this one. Um, their jungle is just way too dark, and they don't want to try to take a fight at this point. They want to play around the warrants on the map they have right now. And we do see the Lina. He does have his Bloodstone. And he might try for another charge here onto the Ember, just to provide vision to see where he decides to go. But doesn't decide to go for it. Instead, he's just going to stick around the Lina once again. The Lina and... And the Batrider are the real ones, are the the ones that he can set up kills with at this point. AM really not ready to fight yet, but later in the game, once AM gets Abyssal, he gets tankier, and he can just afford to blink in there aggressively and go for kills. Uh, we'll see him play more around the AM, but as of now, he's just gonna stick around his Lina, stick around his Tusk. Well, the mid lane. Looks like the Batrider King RD gonna get jumped once again by the Nyx Assassin. Fortune for him, he's gonna go down, and this is a pretty big kill as it's 20 minutes in the game now, and Roshan is a constant threat. Whoever takes the first Roshan in this game will have a pretty big advantage, and now his teammates are caught out, and they're getting cut off as well by the Earthshaker as well as the Nyx Assassin. Nyx Assassin gonna come in, but he didn't find anyone yet, and so he's gonna charge in, get the kill there onto the Earthshaker, but was it worth it for what? And, and he goes down. Lina goes down as well. Wasn't a deny though. So they trade both their lives for a Earthshaker. Um, I mean, there was a, definitely a chance to back there. They just didn't do so. And I think Dyer might head into Roshan now. Who knows? Uh, he isn't moving his camera at all on death. So, or now there it is. Well, probably tabbed or something like that. And he's still very far, or not very far away from his Midas, but he's kind of close to it and he's about 150 more gold or something like that 100 gold um, should come soon but it's still a very late Midas and we'll see if it actually pays off or not because the later this game goes I'm pretty sure Dyer is at the advantage they want to end the game with a farm AM at this point if uh, they don't end the game with a farm AM they get to late game they don't really have any way to deal with the Terror Blade as Luna's nukes, Lina's nukes will no longer be uh, good enough to take out his illusions once they get too tanky with the Scotty and things like that. And let's just check the Terror Blades farm real quick. And here we'll see the Midas fly out. But yeah, he's on his way there already. Uh, BKB as well is going to be a huge pickup onto him. And if you look at the Ember Spirit, he's going for a Lincoln Spirit. That's going to pretty much prevent him from going down to the Spirit Breaker or the Lasso at all. It's very annoying to play against Lincoln's carriers when you're Spirit Breaker. You can't charge them from across the map. Uh, it would just pop their Lincolns. But now we see that AM realizes that Roshan is very important to their victory. They'll go right into the pit and try to do it, but this is a pretty risky play. Their team fight is not the greatest. If you look at Dire, they got Nick Assassin, they got Earthshaker, and they got Amber Spirit. Uh, as well as terribly in a big team fight is a very formidable hero with all his illusions but it looks like they will be able to sneak Roshan so this is a big win for the Radiant team and the Midas was picked up first use of it and it's gonna allow him to get level 12 a little bit quicker um, getting that a uh, little bit of extra oomph on his ultimate here but we see that Radiant still has a pretty rough time ahead of them in terms of trying to end this game. Um, they need to just play off of one big AM timing and they don't have much room for error. And we'll see what happens. This game has slowed down quite a bit now as AM is doing AM things while we look at the Spirit Breaker. He is just sitting around at this point, but we'll do a lot of analysis on his late game charges and his most importantly the team fights that break out uh, it's pretty important that he charges through a lot of heroes most notably like all the terrorblade illusions and 
disrupts the fight as much as possible. Otherwise, uh, they'll lose the team fight outright because if the Echo starts coming out, Nyx gets a good stun, um, there's no way they can win. Uh, they're pretty much reliant on getting a really good initiation and surprising the enemy team in AM immediately bursting someone and making it a 4v5 fight. Right now, we're going to see a charge come in onto the Nyx Assassin. I'm not so sure about his camera control there, it's a bit weird, but Nick Sasson is just going to run away with a haste stream. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, AM going to immediately lose his Aegis. And he might end up dying twice here. Chun lock, stun, stun lock, Echo Slam, Yules into the air. Now the charge is going to come through, but it's too late. If he was playing around his AM, they definitely could have turned around that fight, but uh, he was distracted by Nick's mid. For what? And? But uh, now the teammates will arrive, but it's too late. It's gonna be a 5v4 fight. Well, 4v4 now as the ogre was bursted, but that was the Guna Blade used. Now the Terror Blade gonna arrive and everyone should die here. Destructive Pilot goes down. Ember with a godlike streak. Lena most likely will have to deny herself here. She does have a TP scroll to get herself away. And nice stun from her there. Will maybe allow her to turn this one around, but no, she will definitely still have to deny herself. She's gonna try to juke and jive. Maybe she can TP away now. She's gonna try it. Here he goes. Nope, Ember Spear has arrived. And now that she tries to do that, she won't be able to even deny herself as the damage came out too quick and she's gonna end up going down. And, um, it's actually really bad by the Radiant team now. They needed to play around their AM player, but he got caught out. I mean, you could say it's his fault, but if he had the team behind him there, they definitely could have turned out a uh, fight around pretty easily they just needed the tusk or the spirit breaker there but instead they're distracted by the nyx mid unfortunately and now he's going to be building into a blade mail there's a lot of aoe damage on the side of the dire the blade mail will help reflect some of that just go all in at this point he's probably uh, thinking about just going ham and uh going for broke pretty much uh, he charges in and doesn't expect to live but he wants to do as much damage to the enemy team as possible uh, in that time frame so that's going to be a huge loss for the Radiant. They still are ahead in terms of net worth, but I feel like the whole team needs to play around the AM right now. If he gets caught out a couple more times, uh, they're just going to outright lose the game. Uh, it's cool to like farm here and there, a camp, but they need to be in close proximity with the AM and be able to respond to any movements onto him. They lose a touch top, but he's a support. That's not the biggest deal in the world, but it's dire getting more and more kills now and this terror blade is looking scary if you look at the net worth right now on sunbeat he is almost approaching the am and that's not something you want to see you can see destructive pilot he did tp rotate into the top lane to try to take out the ember spirit but ember has backup and lena's just gonna end up going down he does get the ultimate here on the ember but no one is there to focus him down meanwhile on the back line am tries to go in he does take out the earth shaker last are gonna be used as well into the ogre but now it's a 4v2 fight, Batrider, AM versus everybody, and oh, they're going to be able to pop the shrine, AM gets another kill, but it's once again only on a support, they're going to try to take out the Ember, will they burn enough mana? Nope, he's going to be able to get away to the low ground, see the turn rate affecting him there a little bit, but that's a big win for the Dire, their net worth is coming back in, of course, during this time, Stunby has just been farming, wasn't involved in that one at all. And definitely that charge kind of baiting the Lena in. Um, they wanted to turn that one around and did not work out at all. They didn't have teammates there in time. So once again, getting turned right back around on them and another fight loss for the Radiant. And they can't afford much more of those. And we see Dyer coming right back in. And that's going to be their gem. They take out King RD. Gem has been claimed by the Dire, and that's a huge loss now as their map control going to be completely removed. And who's buying wards in this game? It looks like it's Tusk, but how poor is the Tusk? Alright, not that poor. Experience is not looking that bad either, but of course it does have like a 30%, 40% experience uh, talent. So that's the reasoning behind that one. But now they're playing with a dark map. It was a dark map before the enemy had a gem, but now uh, 
know, you can be sure that a uh, map will remain dark, and uh, it's really hard for Batrider to play at this point, or anybody to play in this game, as they really need to get good vision to get a pick off onto someone at the start of the fight. They can't afford to take a 5v5 fight where Dyer gets all their spells off. They need to catch someone by surprise, and they need to just burst them with AM. Or the Lena, of course. And Sunbee did build into the Lincoln Sphere. He's no longer going to be able to charge as well. And at this point, Spirit Breaker is pretty much useless. Uh, with double Lincolns on the enemy cores, it's going to be super hard to charge them in fights to disrupt the team fight. And he can really just focus on the Nyx, the Earthshaker, as well as the Ogre. And they're not ideal targets to charge. And at this point, he really needs to line up his charge in a way that he will charge through the Terror Blade or the Ember uh, without directly charging them, right? And we'll see how that goes there. And now Radiant feeling pretty lost at this point. Their map is entirely black. And next, Roshan is spawning. Uh, potentially in one minute uh, may respawn but of course there's the timer after that as well um, D warding is really important in this game as well and they're gonna drop the ward at this point they're gonna find a ward so nice D ward from the tusk once again but let's see what will unfold in this game the blade mail will be complete on the spirit breaker but a bunch of enemy heroes in the top lane right now so let's see here well, they're looking to bait the AM, but I don't know about this one. AM gonna get gone on by the Nyx Assassin, but Nyx not gonna commit to this one. He's gonna blink away immediately. They could have uh, attempted to channel a charge there, but uh, his camera wasn't really in the right spot. And now King RD gonna get Searing Chains. He's gonna immediately pop his BKB, blink in, tries for a uh, lasso onto the Terror Blade, but of course he can't blink in. I don't believe he actually used his uh, lasso, but he used another ability to cancel Lincoln's. But he couldn't get in range to get the lasso. So yeah, it's still on cooldown. The charge does come in, and the fight's not looking that bad as it's two for two right now. And Terribly has already been taken down. Antimage was able to blink in and blow someone up. Now the order is gonna get taken out as well. Keep in mind they still have lasso. Pretty big team fight win, and let's do a bit of a play for that fight. So it's kind of focused on the Bat Rider as the fight was breaking out here. So if you look at the Spirit Breaker right here. That was an honest breaker. Look at the charge right now. He's gonna charge through. Or he actually got his charge cancelled. He actually didn't do anything in this fight, huh? Oh, wait. Yeah, he actually, did. he actually didn't do anything in the fight. Alright. Sometimes you just don't do anything in the fight. I mean, it happens. Uh, he was playing against a lot of stuns. And it looks like his charge was cancelled somehow, and then he didn't get his ultimate off. Didn't get the blade mail off, so I wouldn't say he didn't do anything. He did reflect some damage with the blade mail there and we look at the team fight recap let's see how much damage 1000 damage done there. not bad it's about the same as the earth shaker so it's actually a, a lot of damage with the blade mail so value item pickup right there but once again spirit breaker gonna die but his team does win the fight at the end of the day so not bad once again he's not moving his camera looks like he does alt tab or something but the rest of this team gonna push high ground. I'm not sure about this one though. Uh, Ember is very good at holding high ground, especially with the Nyx Assassin there as well. And they're definitely gonna try. King RD really wants to lasso onto somebody, but he will not find it. He's gonna pop his BKB and we'll have to back away now. You gotta watch for the Ember though. He might come in and cancel someone's TP here. And I don't know what the camera movement here is from Disruptive Pilot. It's all over the place. And he's gonna. What is, what's going on? Alright, GG. Is it GG? Let's go. What is actually going on? Is this real camera movement? Alright, apparently it's an elaborate bait. So he walks in. Now AM gonna turn around and get a kill there onto the Ember Spear. And we gotta go back and watch the high level play. I mean, that was, that was actually too high level for me to uh, comprehend. So we get the. Uh, team pushing top there he's keeping eyes on them this is watching now he's gonna afk and just stare at nothing for a little bit then he's gonna taunt walk into the mid lane stand on the low ground and just stay there for a solid three seconds ember spirit gonna go on him he's gonna realize he's in trouble he's still keeping the camera there for i don't know what reason now he's gonna look top charges through everybody and then gets an ultimate and will turn around the fight so 
that's a high level spirit picker play right there. You pretend you're AFK for 3 seconds, turn back around, charge the opposite lane through the entire enemy team, and that's when they have Lincolns, right? It doesn't matter if they have Lincolns or not, if you charge a creep wave, it doesn't matter um, if you're charging them or not, if you charge through them, it still will stun them. Stuns 3 people there, gets his ultimate off as well, and will uh, even charge top to stun Roshan there, maybe get some creeps for himself here. Big play there. And I'm definitely going to use that in my Spirit Breaker repertoire called the uh, pretend I'm AFK, uh, have my camera queued up on another lane so I can charge. Because they don't really have a way to cancel him from charging there. As you saw, the Amber Spirit initiated and the Searing Chains was not going to stop him. And then they didn't, uh, he didn't get stun locked down because you pretty much have to stun lock him down and burst him. But at this point, he's very tanky, right? He has the extra armor from the Blade Mail, has the power chance as well, and he's level 17 as well. And so there is a not a high chance that he would get bursted there unless he gets like echoed or something like that. But so he was able to get away with that charge and turn that fight around and his team will get the second Roshan. So big play there and now Ari is gonna cancel the Terra Blades Lincolns and go in for the ultimate just to play chicken with him a little bit there. He's still playing very risky in this top lane with low health, and that is because AM is in the bottom lane, but ideally maybe he should be behind AM. Who knows? But I am gonna go down. He is dead, and now he's just dying to a terribly delusion. All right. And so I am gonna go down, trying to take the bottom racks. Uh, maybe someone should be behind him. Maybe, but no one is. So he once again he goes down by himself. And fortunately for them, he wasn't actually the Aegis carrier. The Lina ended up picking up the Aegis, so they won't lose their Aegis at least, they just need to wait for the AM to respawn. What they don't want to happen right now is for them to lose the Aegis while the AM is dead, and that looks like what's going to happen here. As AM is dead, now Lina is dead twice as well, doesn't get the deny off, and alright. Now, I think someone will have to buy back as the bottom lane is pushing in, and Terrorblade is going to melt their high ground. They did use the Echo Stand for that as... It was kind of necessary to catch out the Lena before she can get her BKB off. And so we'll see if the Radiant can defend, but in the meantime, Sunmi's already in the mid lane. They're gonna try to go onto the Earthshaker and they do nope. He gets the Yules off in time. Now Ember has arrived and with the Shadow Blade, no dust, no detection. Spirit Breaker is just dead. They go for the Earthshaker there, but what are they going to do against Sunbi? He will have to buy back. AM and Lina do not want to. They're sitting on 13 seconds, and as soon as Sunbi sees that buyback, he's going to back away. So we do see the Spirit Breaker buyback in action there. He's going to lose all his gold. Uh, he hasn't had any item progression past his uh, Midas and his Blade Mail at this point. Uh, the Midas did give him a lot of levels though, he was up to level 18. And did the mix just buy a 37 minute Midas? What in the world? Oh, anyway. Uh, it's gonna be level 18 for the Spirit Breaker now. He's gonna get an Ogre Club most likely for a BKB or potentially an Echo Saber. Maybe Halberd wouldn't be that bad either. He's gonna charge in. He will get his level 17 here. He's Midas, bro. He's using it. Oh, he just used it on buyback cooldown. Alright. What is this? Only 80 gold. I don't know about that one. It was a visual bug or something like that, but. Uh, what is he charging now? Just charging through, sticking his team, and so they completely wasted their Aegis? What happened to their cheese? Who has a cheese? Looks like someone had a cheese and it was, oh never mind, AM has a cheese in his uh, backpack. So there's the cheese. Uh, so they still have a cheese, but at this point, uh, how do Radiant really end the game? Uh, Terror Blade is a really no-go zone, they can't fight into him at this point. AM is definitely not strong enough to fight him. They're equal in net worth, but Terror Blade will melt the AM if they ever meet up uh, one on one in a fight. Well, it's not technically one on one, right? It's one on four. Or however, illusions and terror blade managed to spawn in the fight. And, uh, let's look at the disruptive pilots and where he's moving right now. Looks like he's going with his team to 
the top lane, but he realizes that's probably not the best place for him to be, so he charges mid. It will show himself, and he might get caught out here if there's a hero waiting, but no, he's fine. Um, I definitely think someone should be playing around the AM right now. Because he does have kill potential, a lot of heroes. He does have his abyssal now, and... I mean, sure, he can try to go for a kill on his own, but just having the extra hero there, Tusk or Batrider or the Spirit Breaker, uh, will allow him to set up a kill. I feel like they should just one person, or one hero plays behind the Lena, one hero plays behind AM, and they need to find a pickoff somewhere. But the one thing about the enemy team is not a lot of them are showing the map at any point in time. But the only heroes that are really farming Heat Waves are the Ember and Terror Blades Illusions, but you can't gank Terror Blade Illusions, of course. And so they will go for a smoke, but the uh, chances of them running right into someone aren't actually going to smoke right under a ward. So Dyer knows exactly what's going on, and they will run straight into an Earthshaker with a Shadow Blade. This gets spotted out, BKB is immediately popped by the Lena. For what? And let's just look at the Spirit Breaker once again and see the big plays we get from him right now. He's going to charge in with the Bat Rider. They will connect onto the Earthshaker. He's going to use the ultimate there as well as a bit of a stack stun, which will allow the Earthshaker to get away because there's no backs from him. Now the Echo Stand going to come out. King RD avoiding that one though, but meanwhile on the back line, AM is left against the whole enemy team. They tunnel vision onto the Earthshaker and they lose their whole team in the process. It definitely wasn't the play to continue to go on the enemy team once they already knew that the smoke was spotted out by that ward. But instead, they decide to go anyway. Now, AM will have to buy back. Lena most likely will have to buy back as well. And if they die at this point, the game will be over. Disruptive Pilot charges right in for what he gets stunned down. Ember Spirit takes him very low, but he will pop the shrine. Debated. No, no. Tensai comes in with the right clicks. Nick's Assassin attacking so fast, but he charges away just in time. And they will be able to turn that one around. Sick play there by Spirit Breaker. Almost going down there, but it will work out. He will be going for an Echo Saber, not a BKB. I'm not sure about this one. It can just win the game if he gets a super good bash off. He did go for the extra bash damage, but um, BKB will make it so he can charge into the fight and be pretty much fearless. The only hero that he does have to worry about is the Terror Blade. I guess Ember did go for a physical damage build, so it's not like Ember is all magic damage at this point either, so... Um, let's see, this is the more YOLO build, I would say. Having a BKB definitely is appreciated, even just to isolate heroes like Nyx or Shaker in the fight. Uh, make sure that they don't cast their spells or get their abilities off, but we'll see what happens. As that was a pretty good high ground defense, it did have to commit the AM's buyback, and if AM dies at this point, um, it's pretty much over actually, so I would expect that everyone plays around the AM at this point. Uh, they need to be behind him, they need to be ready to charge in to make sure that he does not die in these fights. You know, what the heck happened to Sunday's wings? It looks like he lost them in that last fight. And now we're going to see the reflection coming out from the Terror Blade. going to burn a lot of AM's mana, that's one reason why Terror Blade is pretty good against AM. And Destructive Pilot looks like he was considering charging to the top lane there, but I don't think that would be the best idea. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, he is pretty high level at this point after those turnaround kills, level 21. And once he gets level 25, I'm pretty sure you go for the charge speed. Um, I was way too good to pass up. I'm sure the extra percentage chance is good in some scenarios, but the charge speed is just insane. The fact that you can just zoom zoom through the entire enemy team and stun them all there's a dd rune spawning in the top rune so i said this game will most likely end on the second agus if someone got it but once again the radiant got agus twice in a row and didn't do anything literally nothing with either of the aguses they got agus and they just fed it and speaking of feeding now king rd gonna go down to again coming out from the dire and in the myths, the tusk gets caught out as well. He's gonna go down too. Neither of them have buyback, and this might just be mid racks. They can't defend 3v5, especially against a terror blade. Here comes the metamorphosis. Disruptive Pi just gonna charge it in. Oh, Alright, he's dead too. So now it's 2v5, and it might just be game. It's definitely racks. It's definitely two racks, because AM and Lena cannot fight against the dire at this point. So that is one rack down. I mean, 
is a good uh, Spirit Baker performance, but unfortunately it looks like this game will be a loss. Um, 5, 10, and 19, not quite the triple-double score you normally see from a Spirit Breaker. Um, he needs 5 more kills for that one, but unfortunately Delina is also kind of in the same boat here as well. 5, 9, and 9 on her, and none of those were denied deaths, by the way. And AM did his best to carry this game, King RD with some nice plays as well, but um, it all goes down to Aegis is being entirely wasted, and it's partially on whoever was holding the Aegis' fault, definitely the Lina there just getting caught out, but yeah, that was just straight B game, they're gonna go straight down the throne, straight take down the throne here after those three kills, uh, AM and Lina not even gonna bother fighting, GG is gonna be called, and what do you guys think about that one? Some 7k Spirit Breaker gameplay, this just is a replay right from yesterday, so this is a very recent replay, and it is from a support position, um, might do another one of these as a addendum to this series uh, from the offlane position because it is his preferred role but unfortunately I didn't really watch over this replay beforehand he ended up being forced into support position I should have seen it coming as I saw King RD in the game already and of course he was going to play offlane but I just wasn't thinking about that when I downloaded I just wanted to get the most recent game one of the most recent games and so that's going to be that uh one thing that we learned for sure was that uh, pretend to be afk charged to the side lane strat i think that is pretty effective i'm going to try that one out myself but just see here um some high skill 7k gameplay here on spirit breaker you know it requires a lot of uh timing and precision to play this hero properly and i feel like he had a decent impact had a couple of throws as well and it was a good game to learn from um definitely bait his team to death i would say a couple of times but definitely won his team fights uh, a couple of times as well so it definitely evens out at the end of the day i'm saying definitely a lot but this is going to be it for this video it's a bit of a long one but uh leave a comment down below if this is something that you're interested in um there's a lot of interesting players in na dota and i can do a lot more of these player reviews player profiles and I can even do them in multiple parts because this wasn't really the greatest game to show off the uh, Spirit Breaker prowess of Disruptive Pilot, aka Kenneth, aka you talk I negative five MMR or whatever his fucking name was. But uh, we'll see in the future. But it was definitely a game that was interesting. You can learn a lot from it in terms of how to play with an AM um, and what you can do to win the game because there's. A lot of times where if they were just behind the AM or they were just playing around him at all, they probably could have just straight won the game. Uh, they didn't utilize that timing at all. When AM was strong, no one was just behind him or doing anything with him. And it resulted in him just getting picked off on his own. And you could say that's AM's fault, but I mean, as a team, you really have to play around him, not force him to play around you. He's your carry, right? And so if you look at the graphs like they were winning the early game really well am had a super good lane um he had a battle free at a very good timing but it was just a disruptive pilot i don't know what he was doing he was jacking off or i don't know what but he was afk for like some parts of that game it definitely looked like it as his camera wasn't really moving and whatever that was uh, i feel like just having him or anyone else behind the am some of those scenarios could have turned this game around but unfortunately that didn't happen and Dyer ended up winning uh, with one good smoke gank in the late game and that's just what happens when you have a terror blade on your team so um, hope you guys enjoyed this one and um, stay tuned for more of these in the future I'm down to do them but uh, this is how you get 1000 MMR from playing Spirit Breaker in 7.06 guys make sure you check it out and if you're interested in learning how to play Spirit Breaker make sure you check out this guy's replays he is uh, let me get the name right here guys just search disruptive pilot or talk me and it's negative 25 on dota buff All right he has about 8,000 games played has a 51 percent win rate but he is 7,000 matchmaking points guys definitely a big milestone for any dota player right and so make sure you check him out make sure you check me out um uh, by subscribing watching my other videos, whatever, but uh, this is going to be it for this one, and peace out everyone.